Baldur's Gate 3 is a sea change in how we tell stories. And in this video, I want to go into why I think that is and how it really shows a huge, important generational shift in the way people relate to games and how games tell stories. I came to this realization when I was sat on the couch, tears streaming down my face, gin and tonic in hand, as I watched One Piece's Netflix adaptation. And one of the things that hit me was that I really, really enjoyed the story. Now, for those of you in my uh, small audience that don't watch anime or read manga, One Piece is a Japanese manga. It's the highest selling manga, I believe, of all time. And it's recently gotten a Netflix adaptation. One Piece is basically a, a journey to the West, but with pirates. It's a, about a guy who's kind of like a monkey. I mean, his name is Monkey. And he uh, journeys around the world doing adventure thingies. But it has that same Journey to the West hero arc to it. Um, and it's recently gotten a Netflix adaptation that is very faithful to the original arc of the manga that was released. Wait, let me check. When was that released? 1997. So it's been running a long time. And while it was released in 1997... The way that the initial story arc from, from the beginning starts is very, like, traditional for the 1970s and 80s. That uh, here, standard hero's journey stuff that I talked about in my video on uh, what's wrong with modern CRPGs, where I, where I argued that enough, not enough games are still using the good old tried and true journey to the West hero's, uh, hero's journey trope. One of the things that's interesting about the hero's journey trope is it represents to me Let's call it the left-hand side of storytelling. At least this is how I visualize it in my head. The left-hand side of storytelling says, hey, we're going to engage people in the story by giving them someone who's not very powerful, not very important, and we're going to watch them succeed and grow more powerful. In fact, more so than One Piece Dragon Ball Z is probably the most famous adaptation of a Journey to the West style narrative in which a small little boy with a monkey tail becomes stronger, stronger, stronger until he's over 9,000. But these are the types of stories that are on the left-hand side of storytelling for me. You start off with the smallest, most insignificant character, and the viewer or reader or game player is intrigued to watch that character grow and succeed. That's what engages us in the narrative, is watching them grow. The same way, I don't know, I enjoy watering my plants and watching them grow. It's the, the experience of growth is what drives your engagement. And Baldur's Gate 1 is another example of this, albeit told in a much more Western way with less influences from Journey to the West. Baldur's Gate is quite literally, in some respects, your journey to Baldur's Gate. For those of you in my audience that have only played Baldur's Gate 3 and not 1 and 2, I won't spoil the story. But safe to say, you do some very basic uh, chores around Candlekeep, which is where you're born. And upon leaving Candlekeep on a mission that is unyet specified, your guardian is murdered, leaving you left alone in a world that you're now going to have to struggle in as a small level one paladin or fighter. I think the canonical character is a fighter. It's basically very hard. Kobolds are scary. And when kobolds are scary, you are not very important in the world of Dungeons and Dragons. Now, this leads me to what I want to call the right-hand side of storytelling. The right-hand side of storytelling, when done well, gives us a character that we're engaged in because they're super important, super powerful, or just generally a badass. Think Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Predator films, or no, Arnold Schwarzenegger in every Arnold Schwarzenegger film, or uh, Sigourney Weaver in the Alien films, or she's just awesome, or it can fail and you end up with a character like Rey in the new Disneyfied Star Wars, where she's just awesome, but it feels kind of flat. And one of the reasons that fails is that what we were expecting with Rey was a hero's journey, and what we got was her being a big, bad Arnold Schwarzenegger badass the whole way through. And so we never saw her grow. So these are the ways, I think this light left, that's how I imagine, left and right. There's two ways you can engage people in story. Either they want to see narrative growth during the game, movie, film, TV, or... They want to be engaged because the person is just so darn cool. And if you grew up in the 80s and 90s, I'm sure you can take this left-hand, right-hand dichotomy I've set up and break down most of the films that were big in the 80s and 90s into these two categories. 
Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't do either of these. You're not super special, but you're also not on a hero's journey either. You don't start Baldur's Gate 3 the way you did Baldur's Gate 1 by helping a man with his sick cow or finding a hangover cure for a drunken guard. Or was that a sword? I don't know. He was drunk. Anyways, you don't start doing the menial tasks that a young adult or teenager would. You start off, for some unknown reason, on a mind flayer ship going sailing literally through the stars to crash land. Wait, what other RPG starts with a ship that crashes and you land on a beach? What was that game called? Larian's indelible creativity aside, it's an interesting way to introduce RPGs because it sits in the middle of this right-hand and left-hand storytelling. You're not on a hero's journey because you didn't start off killing rabbits, but you're also not super powerful or amazing because you just got your butt kicked by a bunch of mind flayers and cambians. It looks to me like this type of storytelling is becoming more and more popular, and I don't particularly enjoy it. And I also don't understand why it's becoming popular, and I also don't understand why I don't enjoy it. So let me go into why I don't like it, and let me go into why I think it's becoming more and more popular. So let's start with why it's more popular. One of the things that social scientists have noted increasingly over the past decades, really since the early 90s, is increasing levels of positive and negative self-perception. Basically, we self-monitor a lot more, and we tend to be prone to both depression and narcissism at much higher rates than in the past. So what do these psychological facts have to do with storytelling? I think there are several reasons, but one of them is that as our self-perception grows due to social media and we become more self-obsessed, more narcissistic and more depressed, and we crave more instant satisfaction from what we're doing, the good old hero's journey motif just feels like too much time. Why am I saving this guy's cow by finding some medicine in a haystack? Why am I helping a drunk soldier with his sword? How's that interesting? And then why do I end up alone in the middle of a field? How's that engaging? I don't have time for that. And being in that situation in fiction is just giving me too much of the anxiety that I already feel in the real world where I'm not a main character. I'm not a famous YouTuber or Instagrammer. I'm just a nobody. And the last thing that I want in a world where I'm a nobody is for my entertainment and media to also tell me that. The other thing is what if you watch a lot of reaction channels on YouTube, which I tend to do, you'll notice, you'll have heard the phrase uh, main character syndrome used a lot. And this tracks with our social media obsession and narcissism and depression and a lot of other things. But main character syndrome in real people is going to make them feel very, very anxious if they play a hero's journey style game. But you might say, old man Banjo, shouldn't that then work the other way around and more people prefer the right-hand side of your dichotomy where it's big Arnie or some super powerful hero dominating the frame. And I think that's true. We have seen the rise of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which was quite successful. And I think it does play in to the sort of storytelling dichotomy that I've mentioned here. But when it comes particularly to gaming, that just doesn't work, right? Because if you start out way too powerful, the game just isn't going to work narratively. While Larian set the game up completely differently with a huge cinematic style in-game monsters, for those of you that actually don't play tabletop D&D, you could play a and d campaign for, I don't know, like a year or maybe even longer before your party got anywhere near Cambians or Mind Flayers or Gith Yankee or Nautiloids. I mean, that's heavy, big, bombastic end-of-campaign stuff for most role players, at least in my experience. So I think what Larian have tried to do is they've looked at trends in more millennial and Gen Z storytelling, and they've tried to integrate that Marvel Cinematic Universe feel into a computer game where you still got to start at level one. And I think this tracks with a lot of attitudes towards what performs well on Amazon Prime or Netflix in terms of their narrative design. Remember, Baldur's Gate 3 is in the top 
four to five games on Steam at the moment. So with that many a number of players, we're getting the large data set that we'd be able to use to track things like the success of a series on Netflix. We really are seeing Larian succeed in the way that a good Netflix series, well, good, successful Netflix series um, goes these days. And on to the second half. So what I don't like about it. Well, I think there's two things. One, while I am a Marvel fan, I don't particularly like that way of story setup for an RPG. I prefer my RPGs to be more on the left-hand side of the dichotomy where you start small and then things get epic and there's a sense of scaling up. Even games that have reasonably strange RPG stories, such as Vampire Masquerade, actually still start you off as a low-level vampire. And then you sort of scale up in epicness, although that game is a little bit on the stranger side. But I think almost all JRPG, uh, JRPGs, almost all RPGs that are like, have some form of the left-hand side of the dichotomy. So I'm a left-hand, I'm a left, <laughs> I'm a left-wing bias. I was about to say left-hand biased. It makes me sound like I'm a Satanist. I'm just listening to too much black metal. But I like the left-hand side of that dichotomy more. The other thing is, and I have to admit this, I think there's been a real cultural shift in the storytelling of Baldur's Gate 3. And I think Baldur's Gate 3 will go down as really the first Zoomer RPG. Take example, the sexuality in the game. I'm not going to touch on the politics here. I've had to delete a lot of comments off my videos of people being positive about my videos and thinking that I'm being transphobic. Please don't. Please don't make transphobic comments in my videos. Uh, I don't think it needs to be said. Does it need to be? Everything has to be said on YouTube. Don't do it. Anyways, the way the relationships with the characters change really has shown me that I did not grow up in the tender generation. I've been in a long-lasting relationship for over a decade. Missed out on that completely. It strikes me how the characters speak to each other, and I feel like if I got the correct dice rolls, I could quickly turn my party's camp into Sam Bankman Freed's polycule. If you don't know what I'm referencing there, you basically live under a rock. Why are you on YouTube? I feel like there's a real cultural change. And I do feel like the writers they hired at Larian really, really knew how to take traditional D&D and shape it in a way that was going to be much more accessible to a younger audience. Um, and that's, that's, yeah, I don't think the game is made for me. I think that's really the reason that I, uh, made so many angry videos on YouTube. Uh, it's not made for me. Uh, games that are made for me, uh, I like, and games that I don't, I'm just not their intended audience. And it shows in the number of sales. It really has. The sales for the game are absolutely astronomical. I think Starfield will knock it off its throne when Starfield comes out. But Starfield's going to have its own problems, and in many ways, I think the release of Starfield has been eclipsed by the release of Baldur's Gate 3. I'm not going to play Starfield because I have too many other games to play. I'm working on retrospectives of Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Basically, if you liked Baldur's Gate 3, I'm going to try to encourage you to play Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 and get more into CRPGs. And uh, I'm also working on some JRPG retrospectives. So I have, a, I have a lot of games to play on this channel. Speaking of this channel, we're hitting 500 subscribers with the release of this video. Thank you guys so much. And if you do enjoy content on RPGs, narrative discussions about media and storytelling, but mostly all in relation to RPGs vaguely, like and subscribe. And uh, I would love to see you in the next video. If um, you think that I've got this left-right dichotomy of storytelling wrong, let me know. How would you divide that up? Uh, I'm a philosopher by, well, was a philosopher by trade. I don't do English lit. Is there another way of dividing how we view protagonists and story growth? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.